Okay, so this is Bryce, and this video is being recorded on uh, July the uh, 19th. And I have an opponent here at uh, 200 400 who I've just played maybe about uh, 10 20 hands with. Here, uh, there are actually a lot of draws my opponent can have because I have a good redraw. Now that since I've turned the nuts, I'm going to raise, but otherwise, I might continue calling considering that I do have some equity. And uh, that, uh, as long as our heart falls, actually beat a wide part of his range, considering that most people will only uh, raise there with uh, hearts or an ace, or maybe something like jacks up, or sometimes a strong jack. Um, and so uh, overall, since there are so many uh, heart combos, and in this case he actually did have a heart combo, he had king three of hearts, uh, I would actually be getting a good price to continue, and to continue to call a non-heart river as well. So even though if I'm behind, I'm not getting quite the right price to improve. Overall, I'm getting a good price to do that. And so for the first couple of hands here, I don't really have a particular game plan for this uh, guy yet. He seems a little, little bit loosey-goosey, a little bit looser on the edge, in a way that's not good. A very, it's very hard to be too loose playing heads up limit hold'em, but in the sense that um, some a, a few too many hopeless bets are going in, as opposed to bets that can potentially win pots, or, potes, or potentially at least um, you know, uh, force me to uh, you know, give up bets or uh, commit too many bets later. In this case, I think if he had a 10, he would raise. You know, a parent of 10 would raise. Uh, there's, you know, of course, the danger you made queens up, but that's not really any more dangerous than any other given card. So it's actually a pretty blank river, given that I know my opponent is aggressive. Uh, so 5-6, I'll call. And so usually, uh, and so here, I, I, mo I find on ace-high flops, a lot of people will retaliate, because this is a, a board where it's very easy for me to have some sort of weak draw. So I'm actually going to come over top, and if he raises a turn, I may even 3-bet. I believe I have to play my draw that big, because he's going to retaliate some of the time. And obviously, as I can see, if he raises this card, it's a little bit tougher. I'm going to fall through, and hopefully I can maybe get him to give up with something. Um, I'm not giving him too much credit here, but I'm not going to re-bluff. Uh, just because I believe if he had the flush, he would raise a turn, and I don't think Queen's up is really that scary a card. Uh, but I'm not going to put in the re-raise there. Though if he's waiting for the river to put in a bluff, that's an okay way to do it too. So usually against most of my opponents, I kind of have a rule of thumb for myself. And that rule of thumb is, if I don't know why I'm supposed to be winning, I'm probably not. And so against most people... What I will try and do is just formulate a bit of a game plan, and if I don't have a bit of a game plan after half an hour, and they're very tough, and they're mixing up their play well and stuff like that, is um, I'm not always super good at doing it, uh, but uh, I, I will generally, uh, you know, at least hope that I quit that person. And uh, he, he will call very loosely here. I don't necessarily mind uh, following through. I don't mind check folding either. Next time, I'll probably make a different action. I'm just going to keep my play randomized, uh, because that's a spot where I don't have much information. Until I do have some information, um, I would rather just keep it randomized, keep it sort of EV neutral. Uh, flop like this. Um, one thing I could consider doing is maybe check behind to kind of uh, lock up my bluff. I'm going to fall through here. Obviously I give up some equity uh, and now I can just you know check behind and fold. Although I, I also set myself for, for a good bluff. Whereas if he has something like ace higher bottom pair and I get the right river card, say um, he may have folded that. Uh, if I get the right river cards, some that makes the four street, I can follow through. And because I know his hand is weak, I may actually have some good fold equity there. So I do have a, a you know a, a bit of a chance to win the pot with the turn. But I'm going to follow through here. Uh, sometimes he's going to put in money with a. Now I'm going to have a very easy value bet. If he raises, I'll just call. But on the turn there, even though um, my hand uh, is maybe uh, maybe something like a 50-50 against his range and the equity he can have, I'd also like to give him an opportunity to, to raise with worse, hand, worse hands as well as raise with his good hands too. So because I believe he'll raise with uh, draws a lot, even though those draws have a fair amount of equity, it actually compensates when I have a showdownable hand for those times that I am actually behind. And uh, in that case, he called me down with a uh, king eight, and so I'm just going to play around. And sometimes, you know, if I don't have a particular game plan to take advantage of an opponent, I'm just trying to see if they're making uh, too many uh, loose mistakes. Uh, you know, just so I can kind of play a rounding game. So now I've gone to uh, no, I'm not double getting. I'm going to call one more bet here, see if he gives up, uh, because when I call twice, usually. Um, it means I'm going to be seeing some sort of show. So very occasionally, I may uh, win a check behind here. And also, in I do have some, usually at least seven outs on the turn, uh, even though my implied is not great, because I might have to lead into the four straight, and uh, you know, other things like that. But it's an okay way to mix it up. And it's an okay way to bounce my play, too. With deuces here, I'm just going to play a passive small pot. If he bets at this flop, he hasn't bet at every flop. So if he bets at this one, I'm going to assume that sometimes he has a piece. And that's a very tough thought for me to continue on. Because it's one of those ones where it very balances, where a lot of the time he's going to have a strong piece of nothing. So I kind of want to continue. I'm just going to cap right away with my jacks for value. 
And so this is the flop, I'm still going to continuation, but now he leads into me. I usually find that this play means some sort of weaker made hand, but it occasionally means a strong hand as well. I'm not going to raise, I'm just going to call down, I'm certainly going to call riverbed. It's gotten very ugly, I'm still going to call, hoping he shows some sort of bluff. In this case, he was actually playing strong or a strong hand and trying to get some action, and that's an okay thing to do too. It just depends on how he thinks I'm going to react. I'm going to take my four king here. I'm actually going to check raise this flop. This is a very contestable flop. The only problem with contesting this flop is a flop that's so contestable that a lot of people will actually. Um, and so now they, he might have picked up spades in the turn and not raised. He might have had you know something like ten nine. But I'm just going to check fold. There's just not enough combos compared to what else he can have. He certainly doesn't have an ace. He probably doesn't even have a, a good jack. But I do believe, still based on the cards you can have, I'll do like a check fold there. But as I was saying, the problem with really contestable flops like that, and that equity here is not super great, but I'm going to raise right away. This is a spot where he certainly has to pay me off with ace high, you know, unless uh, the draw fills out. And on some turn cards, I can also take the option to check behind if he doesn't come over top right away. And calling a reason the turn is another option as well, perfectly fine. Uh, not that it's uncommon on any board to actually get called by, down by ace high heads up, but that's certainly one where I got uh, king high to call down here. I don't believe my uh, poker ace uh, is going to show up with the mucked hands, so I'll just talk about them when they're interesting. Uh, seven deuce off, I'll put in the muck. I do play most of my hands out of the small blind. Again, I think I've talked about that a bit. I think at this point I'll be doing. Uh, so he showed eight six off, which kind of leads me to believe that he thinks eight six off is a weak hand in the big blind, and that's actually plenty of hand to call with. So I'm going to bet here. If he raises, I'm probably going to re-raise immediately. Um, you know, now I, I have a, a little bit of a decision, but I would probably sell three bet if you raise that turn. Uh, it's a bit tougher because a lot of the times, it just depends on what I think he's going to do with different pairs on different flops and call, uh, he'll call down with as well. In this case, he had king eight, so obviously this guy is going to call me down very lightly. Um, and it doesn't actually really affect my play too much overall. That's just sort of a good thing, something I have to be aware of. Um, and it's not even necessarily that uncommon to be called down by a king eight sort of hand. So I'm going to raise with my nine jack and make this pot a bit bigger and then uh, be aggressive with it. If he calls here, uh, I'm going to uh, check the turn. I think if he has a nine, he's going to uh, bet both streets for me. And I, my hand's not quite good enough to check raise. I think if he has, I could try and blocking bet at the ace. Um, but I'm just going to check. I, you know, I, I chop with a, a nine. I might not always get a bet of another hand. I might occasionally get a second bluff, though I think very rarely once I check and call intending to show down. So he just did a bit of a float call there. And so I, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call with my tens, uh, and I'm going to do a, do a call and raise the turn here, just because my hand is that strong. As long as I believe I can get the action. Um, and what's interesting, I can consider waiting for a non-heart river to fall here, uh, because I don't necessarily feel obviously comfortable betting uh, if I uh, wait for a heart river. And this is interesting. So it looks like I had some sort of heart, and he didn't come over top, which is not always it's not a gimme play. That's certainly something that's an option for him to consider if he believes I can be raising with a lot of hearts. This is, uh, I'm going to start with at least one call here. Occasionally I'll get a free card, occasionally I'll have some equity. So I have to consider 5, 6, 6, 7, uh, 9, 10, 10, Jack, Diamonds. I'm going to call and call Blank River. I'm going to call this one as well. He bets quickly. It kind of leads me to believe he has a decent hand. But between the equity I may occasionally have, I have a little bit of equity in my king, and the, uh, and the fact that there are actually uh, very many draw combos on that board, uh, I don't mind giving it up. He leads into this board. I think it's bullshit, but I'm not going to contest it. And that's a bit of a leveling game there where it's, it looks like such bullshit. That um, you know, I really have to ask myself, and the game will be—it's a game of chicken. A lot of the time, a heads-up limit holding does degenerate into a game of chicken, where it's, well, uh, you know, I know it's a really attackable flop. I might be bluffing. I might not be bluffing. Do you want to call bullshit on me? And a lot of the times, that's what the game turns into. Um, uh, you know, mathematics and uh, sort of frequencies aside, and sort of singular situations, when you want to look at uh, what you want to do for that one particular hand and not in the scope of the entire match, very often you just have to uh, make a guess at what your opponent's doing. And yeah, you know, you, and you know, consider what you uh, have as well. So, uh, and so I'm going to uh, just call. And what I'm going to do is, if he's uh, leading out a lot, so I'm going to call. And uh, he leads into this ace river, and this ace is actually very likely for me to have. So I'm actually just going to put in a call. Uh, the uh, the turn card also is not the best turn card for me. And uh, even though it does give me some extra outs to improve, so I think when he leads into that on the river, when it's a hand that I'm so likely to have. Um, raising there can be a little bit thin because again he knows that I'm likely to have the ace. So when he leads into it, it's fairly likely that he has uh, some sort of hand. So I'm going to call here, and I'm going to make an action later. I'm going to call here, and I may maybe raise some rivers. I'm going to go ahead and do that and just kind of get a feel for what he's doing. It looks like he has some sort of hand here. He has a uh, king five, and that's a good call on his part, I think. Uh, though certainly not a good river bet, but. Uh, I'm not going to focus too much on what he's doing unless there's some way I can take advantage of it. 
the reason I somewhat prefer a river race to a uh, 